Peace and blessing and God's tranquility be upon you all and Yeshua precious name for he is the Lord. He is the master. He is the savior. All glory given to the most high Yah for he is worthy family. He is worthy. He didn't got you up this day. He didn't let you live through this whole week. So many different people take their lives for granted and like he just didn't give you a million dollars. He gave you a million dollars when he let you open up your eyelids and gave you this day. Not yesterday, not next week, this day to be a righteous man or a righteous woman before thine eyes. So it's a blessing. Act like, you know, be happy family. It's your father. You know what I'm saying? Be happy. Be grateful. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have to be here. L look, look around you, family. Look around you. Look at all that good stuff that you got. You ain't got to have none of that family. None of that. Now, go walk outside your dough. Look across the street. You see that bum at the corner that ain't got nothing? You and him can trade places real quick if you don't want to show your greatness and your at your grit, your good attitude to what the father is doing for you and your life. Be grateful. Now, what's good, family? This is your brother Jehoshaphat. We are back this Friday. Peace and blessings be upon you all. Uh, family, we're getting it ready for the Sabbath. You know your brother gotta tell you. Honor your father. Love your father. Respect your father. Do all that you have to do inside of this holy day that's been granted to you to be a righteous man or woman in all of your dealings from the most minute to the most extravagant thing that you might put your mind to your hands to be at peace, be righteous, be holy for his Sabbath day family he want to see your respect and your respect it falls through through your actions family so he wants to see your loyalty and it all falls through to your actions family you could take that day and go out and be funky and be all chaotic and be a foul person and just know that day that you spent being foul before God's eyes. He just cut off so many different days of your life. You just don't know. You had 24 hours to show your butt. Well, I'm pretty sure he took 24 days off of your life. You better get some get right, family. Now, I'm not going to keep you. I'm not going to keep you for far too long. And I want to make sure that I go over the story of King David completely all the way through. It'll be the same thing that we did for the story of Sal. So we're going to we're going to give you the roughness. I'm not going to go into full, complete detail of every single thing that he did, but anything that would be so important that it would infect your life. Because you see this man right here and you thinking, what this brother, what this brother going to do for me? What this brother life going to do for me? That's why we're going to come back with the next show, family. God is good. He's going to give you some revelation through this. Hallelujah. For he is worthy, family. He is worthy, family. So sit back. Listen to the story of King David and it's going to bring you some peace tonight. It's going to bring you some pleasure. You, maybe some things you forgot about, David. But the next time when we pick up this series, this series again, we're going to show you the things that David faced that affect you. Now we're just going through the storyline and I try my best family. I will try my best to go through his complete story. I'm only taking out stuff that I don't think is relevant, but I might have to add into stuff. So whatever's not written and it just pops in my mind about him, I'm going to tell you to my best ability. But I bring forth in this sit down of King David 70 percent of his life. I stand firmly on that family, about 70 percent, if not 80. I'm just saying 70 because I'm it could be more than that family. I'm just giving the roughest number out here. It could be a little bit more than that, but to be discreet over here, family, I'm only going to say 70% of his life. And in this 70% of his life is going to be enough to teach you in your own life, family. Let's get it. Okay. So give me a second, family, and bear with your brother. Man, I have to decline that one. Fast in a mug. Fast in the mud. And whoever it was, I will be getting back to you soon. I'm sorry. I got to knock out this little message real quick. You know, you know me. But I love you. I love you a whole lot. 
Okay, family, so let's go ahead and peel back the layers of David's life. Okay, Ding, okay, King David, his life was a life to learn so much of how God will bless you. Some people don't know to call David a righteous leader or a bloodthirsty tyrant. No, no better than the... No better than the fears appointed by King Saul. Who pursued him at his own detriment and loss of kingdom. Yeah, pr pursued him at his own detriment at the loss of his kingdom. David grew up as a, a sheep herder. Having lots of time to become a poet, a musician, and a, a singer of songs to the Most High Yah. He claims, he claims in his youth to, to slay a lion and a bear. Okay, let me stop right there. Now, the, the lion, I will co-sign with David. Okay, I'll... OK, he might have did that. But the bear, that's neither here or there. You know what I'm saying? That's either here or there. Could it have been? Let's let's put it like this. Three out of five family. Three of the Bibles that I read said he did. Two Bibles said he didn't. Three out of five family. So it's either here or there. So back to what he was. He was a he was a poet family. He was a musician. He was a singer of sings to the most high. Yeah, he used to be out there singing hymns. To the most high Yah. He got all that time. That's why your brother always tell you. It is very good for you to have a long time with your father. Look at King David. He was out there in them herds. And what your what what King David be doing? He be singing to the most high Yah. He be praising him and he be worshiping him all by himself, family. A little little young man all by himself, showing the most high Yah gratitude and love. Okay, let's keep it going. OK, OK. He claims in his youth that he's slain a lion and a bear and a bear. OK, I, 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 with the lion part, I, I'll put the two cents on that. While def, while defending his father's sheep all by his lonesome with a rock and a slingshot, he showed courage and might and fearless with God's power, leading him to victory against adversaries, no matter what their connect con, content is is made made of and the time that he was in the wild he grew david trusted in god's love and god's faith and 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 in god's faith in young david's life he would play songs on his harp and sings and sing hymns to praise god's god's word Now, now King Saul heard about Jesse's son. David played the harp, but before that time, the prophet Samuel was sent on a quest to find young David and anoint him as the new king of Israel. But at this time, he was a boy, not a man. In the house of Saul, David would play on his harp a smooth a smooth song but the torment spirit Saul was under the curse by being disobedient to the Lord so that raised that raised anger against Saul I'm sorry family I must have skipped the beat up over here would play on his heart the tormented spirit Saul was under the curse of of by being disobedient to the Lord so that God raised up anger against Saul. The Philistines were continuously engaged in wars and battles with Israel in to the final battle where all of them were destroyed and bottled out within the land. The Philistines taunted all Israel with insulting remarks that, that that was disrespectful to the army of God. And there was not a Hebrew bold enough to stand against the might of Goliath. This this same disrespect 
to all of Israel through the, the tauntings of Goliath made young David angry and and spread word around the Hebrew soldiers that he would face this giant of a man on his own. And the words, the words traveled to Saul about what young David would do. And with Saul's offering his daughter hand in marriage and to make this man wealth, wealthy in the courthouse of King Saul. Still, no man was fierce enough to face Goliath. So Saul, so Saul outfitted young David with his his tools of war. But David was too young and could not wear these overfitting armors that weighed him down and made it hard for David to maneuver. So David took nothing but his slingshot and five smooth rocks he found on the way up to face Goliath. Goliath charged for battle and David ran meeting him on the battlefield. Goliath laughing when he's when he's seen the young the young David. But this did not discourage David in, in his and his. I'm sorry, family. And did not discourage young David to fight. And he grabbed one of the smooth rocks and shot Goliath in the head. And the rock went through like a real shot to the head without his own sword. David used Goliath's sword and cut off his head at the sight of of this made the Philistines flee in panic and did destruction and were pursued and destroyed by the men of Judah. Saul made David to come live with him in his house hold, but gave him none of the promises he made him. Jonathan and David became best friends, the son of Saul. Jonathan and David became best friends and blood brothers inseparable to the eye but Saul because became exceedingly jealous of David's slain Goliath so at this time when so at this time when David was yet a boy he tried to kill David because the people of Israel cried out love for young David but this only made Saul more and more envious of David's and and Jonathan would try to his best to step in between David and his father, but in but in was to no reveal. And David, without being a criminal or an evil man by nature, had to flee Saul's house because the king sought to kill David. So he and about 400 men who was not pleased with Saul, went into hiding in the hillsides of the countryside. But Saul and his army pursued David relentlessly. But God would always keep David two steps ahead of Saul. But David lived in caves, always on the run, living off the land in secret hiding for years until God delivered Saul into the hands of David. But David would not kill him. Because he seen Saul as God's cho chosen anointed. So he spared the king's life. But with all the promises and oaths with with good as 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 God as witness still did not stop Saul infatuation and seeking on killing David. OK, we almost finished here, family. So after Saul was killed, David went into into mourning for for the falling fallen king who seek, who seek to kill him. In obedience to. I'm sorry, family, hold on a second, I'm sorry. So at this at this time, all of Israel was divided with King David being ruler of the south 
and Saul's son being king of the north. It caused confusion in Israel and the people were divided. The more David rose to rise to power was the more the seed of Saul's house was stumped out and could not longer stand. And the old the, the older the older of Judah was the only the elders of Judah was the only ones that kept back their blessing for David to be ruler as king in the north and south uh, providence of Judah. But he was anointed as ruler and killed hundreds of thousands of Israel's enemies. David was not a man who would tolerate dishonor or disgrace. So David had many people put to death just on the 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 shame and no honor. He had thousands put to death, made slaves of his enemies and built up the kingdom ruled over it for more than 40 years. So let me stop that. So a lot of people, when you look at David, David was a killer family. David had a lot of people killed. And just like I said at the beginning of this, some people, some historians look at the story of David, David, and they don't even know what to call him. They look at him as he a righteous man or he's just a bloodthirsty killer. But David will kill you righteously. David was not a man that put up with any dishonor or disrespect. He would kill you. And I don't know if your pastor or people that you listen to would paint David as a killer, but look at this man. He killed thousands upon thousands of his enemies. And don't let don't don't let a Hebrew, don't let an Israelite be around David being disrespectful or doing something cold. He would send out an order to kill them, family. He has so many different people killed. I give you an example. The the people who killed Sal family. That's why I tell you, please read more than just one Bible. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, family, when you start, when you get a thirst of this knowledge and you start reading, you're going to have to get more than one Bible because for some reason, don't none of them all have the same, they don't have the same ending. So you're going to have to put these pieces together. So I, I'm telling you this ending, but it might not be in your Bible. You might find it in another Bible, family. But Saul, some people say he killed himself. I read in Bibles where he killed himself. He had people kill him. It's all kind of different stuff, but the story still remains the same. He's dead. But in the story that I read, David, the one dude told David, it's different. It's a different book. And the what was he? What was he? What was he? Was he an Israelite? What the, well, hold on, family. What was he? He was an Israelite. What was he? He, he was a person living inside of Israel. So he was a foreigner living inside of Israel. He wasn't even he wasn't even a Hebrew, but he said that he had he killed David. You know what I'm saying? And David went, heard about it, and he got he got mad because he still looked at Saul as if he was the anointed from God. That's why David never killed Saul any chance that he got. He could have had killed him, but he didn't kill him. But the man who had killed Saul, he had him stringed and killed. Anytime somebody somebody came up to David and was like, David, I killed your enemy for you. David would kill that person because he, he he looked at it as dishonor. You know what I'm saying? He it's like this with him. Why kill the person who killed my enemies? That don't make that don't make no sense. Right, family. I would be happy that my my friend killed my enemy. But nah, not with David. Uh, uh. It's all about honor, respect, things like that. He would have you killed. David had a lot of people killed family. David sent a lot of people into slavery, family. David executed thousands of women and men. You know what I'm saying? So when they, when you read stories about these people, just know whatever you was thinking, whatever you think you knew about them people, you have to do all of the, the research to find out everything about them. Just listening about what people say to you is not going to tell you that uh, King David was a murderer. You're not going to find that unless you do your reading up on you. And your brother, I'll tell you this right now. King David was a murderer. What did I tell you at the beginning of, of this sit down? Historians don't know what to call him. A blood, a bloodthirsty tyrant or a righteous leader. They don't know. They like, man, David is in between both of them. He could be bloodthirsty or he could be a tyrant, but he did all of those things and he still was righteous. So add that up for yourself. Okay, now where was we at?
I'm sorry, family. Let me find my place again. So King David began ruler of the south. Okay, we talked about that. And Saul's son, he was in he was in power for about like four years. But once more again, did David send somebody to kill Saul's son? You read the Bible and it won't say nothing like that. But Saul's son was murdered inside of his his bed. He was the king of the wolves at the north. He was of the providence of all Israel family. He was the king of the north. And this man was murdered in his in his bed, family. The people who who followed Sal's house, they had his back. They didn't want Sal's seed to get out of power and have David seed. So I don't think it would be anybody in Sal's house, family. I don't think so. So who had Sal's son killed? I don't know, family. But he ended up dead. And it worked out better for David because the people accepted David after after Sal's son was murdered. It's a lot of controversy, family, but I bring these things forth for you to, to make your own opinions on the matter, family. I'm just telling you what happened. You know what I'm saying? As soon as Sal's son was murdered, the people started respecting David. The only thing that was holding him back from having all, all of Israel was uh, is the north. The elders in the north was holding back David. Straight up, family. Okay, let's keep it going. Okay, divided more. Okay, the more the more Sal's steed was stumped out, the more David was was blessed, and he and he rose, family. He rose. He rose the power, but it took people to be killed and knocked out the game. Okay, um, stumped out and could no longer stand, and the old the elders of Judah was the only ones that kept back their blessing for David to rule as king in the north and the south providence of Judah, but. Of all, all Israel, he was the ruler as king of the north. Okay, I've said that. Okay, but he was anointed as ruler and killed hundreds of thousands of Israel's enemies. David was not a man who would tolerate dishonor or disgrace. So David had many people put to death just on their, their shame and no honor. He had thousands put to death, made slaves. Of his enemies and built up the kingdom, the kingdom and ruled over it for more than 40 years as king of Israel. He built a temple for the Ark of the Covenant. So he ruled by the iron rod and fell out of grace with the most high by his lust for Bathsheba, his his soldier, Uriah, Uriah's David's friend and trusted adversary and soldier but david lusted after bathsheba and led and laid with her sinning before yah and plotting and having uriah killed so 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 dead com committed okay adultery okay adultery adultery that lie led to him plotting to have Uriah killed, and he did so. The God of heaven and the earth cursed and punished David by killing his son with Bathsheba. Okay, let me stop right here. Now, God sent the, the prophet Nathaniel to David, and he told him some scriptures. He told him about the dream that he had. And in the dream that he had, that he told him, David got all outraged and he got all mad. And he was sitting there talking about that person should be put to death. But the whole dream the prophet Nathaniel had was about David. So by David sitting there saying that prophet should be the, the, uh, the man who did all of that should be put to death. He was talking about his own damn self, family. David sitting up here by his own prophet. His prophet came. God was mad at David. For sleeping with Bathsheba. He he just didn't sleep with her family. He, he he just didn't commit one sin. He committed two sins because he had Uriah killed. Uriah and, and some people are trying to say, well, Uriah was being dishonorable to the king and didn't want to lay. And did, did, David should have never laid with Bathsheba. He should have never did that. He should have never turned his back on his homie Uriah. He should have never sent him to the forefront of the war to be dead. That's why God cursed him, family. And when God curses us, he pours down his curses on us, family. Okay, let's keep it going. We almost finished here, family. Okay, um, 
Okay, the God of heaven and, and the earth cursed and punished David by killing his son with Bathsheba and having his own seed rise in rebellion against their fathers. David so a dividing spirit, a divine spirit killed killed David's son. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I messed up. I'm jumping up over here by sheep and having his own sea rising. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm on time. Let's run it back by killing his son. God, that's God killed David's son with Bathsheba and having his own seeds rise in rebellion against their father, David. So the dividing spirit, the divine spirit killed David's son, found the remaining survivors of Saul's house and found Jonathan's Jonathan's son gave to to him all of Saul's house. I can't pronounce his name. Family, I get a myth. Shay. Meth of Shay. I, I I'm sorry, but it's 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 David's um son. I mean uh Jonathan, David, David best friend that was murdered on the battlefield with, with Saul. His son was limp in two of his legs, but David he went because he David and Jonathan had an oath. And David was a good man of his oath, and that was his best friend. And he knew that the majority of Sal House was falling to pieces. So he kept the oath that he made with Jonathan and he found his son and his son was limp in two hands. So David got all the possessions of Saul that he had. He gave it to 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 Jonathan's son. And then he asked Jonathan to come live with him and live with him in the kingdom. And he treated him no different than any of his sons family. He was damn good to Jonathan's son. And gave him all of Saul's house to his house and tent and treat him no different than his own son. David had many wives and many concubines. He had many sons and many daughters. But part of the curse from David being disrespectful and disobedient, God cursed David through his offspring, his sons that this... I'm sorry, offspring and his son's message was sent to him by the prophet Nathaniel. Okay, family, we almost finished. Bear with me. Bear with me. We almost finished. Wrapping it up. We're almost there. Check my time out. I'm doing good. Okay, um. Absalom was David's son, made made by his own loins, David's spitting image, and had Charisma and a, a natural ruler of the people. Absalom divided all of Judah so much it forced King David into hiding because Absalom pursued his father with his army. This was all in the curses of dividing the house. So so God put a curse on David when he slept with Bathsheba. He put a curse on David and in that curse, he had his children turn on him. So from the outwardly appearance, David, he was living good. He was the king. He was living fat, living fat. Everybody loved him. But inside his own house is where the torment came, the torment, the, the, the torture, the, the, the hard times came with his own children. God cursed David to where all of his children turned his back and made it hard for David to live. Look at look at Absalom. Absalom is David's spitting image. The people love Absalom. Absalom got all this this charismatic nature. He if, if Absalom was a person that lived in this day, he would be a famous person that everybody would go to and try to follow. This is David's son. This is part of the curse that the Most High Yah put on David. So Absalom was kind of kind of conniving. He was kind of deceptive and he fooled. I would say the better part of 70% of all of Israel to join him. Can you believe that? David's own son went behind his back and got all of Judah to join him. And David heard about what 
what is his name? Absalom was doing. And it kind of scared him because it ran David up out of the king of David. That's the his special kingdom that he made when he pulled all of Jeru all of Israel together. And he made Jerusalem his 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 the, the nation's capital between the north and the south. The uh, Jerusalem, they was always fighting with David, not wanting him to make that the nation's capital. But with David, he he found the way that would be like a, a easy way to destroy Jerusalem. So after he found that way through the water uh, ducks, the, the conduits, how a sneaky way to get into to seize the land. They believed David and they finally gave in to him, making Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the final, the, uh, the, the nation capital. But it was another place that he called the king, the city of David. I think that was also in Jerusalem. But Absalom, I got to say it, family, he punked King David about his own city that he made, family. You got to look at King David. He was the only king. It's only two kings that was able to pull all of Jerusalem together, all of Israel together under one kingdom. And he was one of them. And even with him doing that, his son Absalom had enough pull to have him running and hiding in the forest, no different than Saul. That's what happens when you go against the Most High Yah. What did your father said about things? They repeat themselves. Look at David hiding all in the forest and all in the mountains when he was in his adolescence and barely becoming a man. Now look at the curses God put on David. He right back in the forest. He out there with a gang with the king's guard. He out there with a whole army of valiant soldiers that was the best of all the land but it's still the same point remains he was out there in the forest he got he got ran up out of israel again by his own damn son family by his own damn son so let's keep it going his other kid his other kid this is what his other kid gonna do i forgot his name but his other kid burnt for the lust of his sister now, this coward going to burn for the lust of his sister, rape his sister, then turn around and be mad that he raped her. Does that make any sense? You see the spirits that God sent on us? He lusted for the, his own sister so damn much. But David didn't have him put to death. And that was his son after he raped his own daughter. He lusted after his own sister so much. And I don't understand. This man could have been like his daddy. He could have had 10 concubines. David had 10 concubines, family. Just imagine if he had a, if he had a baby by two of each one of them women. That's 20 different kids right there off of his 10 concubines. But back to his crooked son. His crooked son laid with his daughter. Got rape, rape. He raped. He raped his sister and then turned around and became more evil about his sister than he was the first time. So before he raped her, he loved her. After he raped her, he hated her with a passion. Does that make any sense, family? The evilness, does it make any sense, family? But this is the curse that David brought on himself by being lustful for the eye and giving into the, the temptation of sin and having this. It's one thing to give into your sin. It's another thing to have Uriah killed for your sin. So it's it's a double whammy over here, family. Let's keep it going. We almost finished. Thank you for sticking in there with your brother. OK, now. um, This was all the curses divided the house with David's children, because this is the biggest foes that tried to overtake him and pursue his, him him to his death. But the most high did not not shine on Absalom, but delivered him in the hands of David's men. David regained his kingdom and household. Now, Absalom in that battle, he was running for his life on his donkey family. His hair, he had long hair. His hair got, he, he took pride in his hair family. His hair weighed like five pounds. From what, from what the words say, he was a very devonair man. Can you imagine somebody who was fly, who had all the game, who was pimping? That was David's son. But David's son was trying to get away on a donkey. And he had long hair that weighed about five whole pounds. It got caught up in the brushes. David, man, seen him caught up. His hair caught him up in the trees, family. He couldn't even get out the trees. They pierced him with their spears and killed David's son. Okay, God shined. God shined back on David. Okay, David re regained his his kingdom and his household and was still blessed by the father because he was repaid through his own seed. God repaid him, had him going through it on the outside. That's why I said on the outside, 
he looked like everything was okay. But on his internal, his family was fighting against him at all sides. Just imagine, David could have had 50 kids, family. David had a sexual appetite. That's why I'm telling you, God will curse your appetite. God ain't curse my sexual appetite. But David had an appetite for sex and he had a lot of children. So you can imagine all of at least 25 of his children turning his back on him and making his life a living hell. Internal family. Internal. OK, let's keep on going. Almost finished here, family. OK, um, because he was he was repaid through his own seed. David led to be an old man, which with many years to him, he was one of the only kings to unite all of Israel, built great cities and kept God's commandments. That's why the people adored David for his fear and his love of the creator. Now, I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this with the words of David. So I just told you about his whole life, family. He killed thousands of many of men. He kind of did some scandalous things. He was always. The biggest thing about David is he's the complete uh, opposite of Saul. Saul gave in to the people. David gave in to God and he didn't give a damn about the people. The people had to force David to give in to them. David was more worried about what the most high was requiring of him. That's what got him in trouble with the people. But family, it's more important to be in trouble with your people than to be in trouble with God. You know what I'm saying? And that was your that was David. David was in trouble with the people. Saul was in trouble with God. Uh, God let David live till he was an old man of many years to where his eyes was growing dim. That means blessed with many a years. You can't get that many. Uh, Saul, he died by the edge of the sword. He died by the edge of the sword. So it's a difference, family. Some people say that David didn't go to heaven. But I tell you this right now, and I'm not and I'm not trying to take a crap on their opinion. They're my brothers and my sisters, and they, I listen to them, family. But I have my own opinion as well. Now, some of them say that David didn't go to heaven, that David went to Sheol. But look at Saul. Look how, how he died and look how David died. And that tells you where, where he went. It should tell you, David, uh, Saul died by the edge of the sword. David died by many years. So you tell me who went to heaven and who went to hell. Now, we're going to end this today. Peace and blessings be upon your Sabbath. Please have a good weekend. Please have a good Sabbath. Respect your father. Love your father. Don't be no funky foul sister or brother this weekend. Respect your father. All the things that we do will be repaid back onto us. And it is better for us to be righteous so we don't have these things come up on us, family. And your brother, I'm just keeping it real with you. Make sure you get some of that good word in you. Make sure that you, you, you have some fun for yourself. Kiss them beautiful children. Be, kiss your grandparents. Go see your grandma, your grandpa. Kiss, kiss your mama, your daddy. Be good to your people. Hallelujah. Amen. But enjoy. Rest. Rest that body of yours. You know what I'm saying? Rest that mind. We got a whole week ahead of us, family. If we live to see it, if God blesses us with it, we got a whole week ahead of us. So rest that body. Meditate on God's word. Get God's word in you and live on it and be a righteous man. Be a righteous woman before his eyes. But we're going to leave this with what David. Now, this doesn't come from me at all. This is his actual last words before he died. So I figured it would only be right to put in his last, the last things King David said before he died. Don't that sound like it go together, family? It's the last of his life. I already told you he died as an old man. Okay, let's keep it going. And then I'm off of here, family. I tried to spend my time with you. No, your brother love you. That's what I'm here for you now. You, you, you thought I was going to be placating with you this week. You think I, you thought I wasn't going to give you no shows this week. You thought your brother wasn't going to invest no time in his, with you. What is my name? Fat Boy Fish. What's my name? Fat Boy Fish. What's my name? Jehoshaphat. You damn right. Say it again. Jehoshaphat. I'm your brother and I'm here now. You've been lied to. You've been to deceive. But your brother, I got your back. I'm here for you. Okay, last words of King David. And then your brother. I'm up out of here, y'all. Make sure y'all have a peaceful, blessed, filled weekend. Respect your father. Rest that body. Meditate on that word. Okay, last words. Of King David before he died. 
The spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his words was in my tongue. The God of Israel said the rock of Israel spoke to me. He that ruleth over man must be a just ruler in fear of God and small and small be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth a morning without clouds as the tender grass springs out of the earth by the clear shining after the rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he has made with me a everlasting covenant ordinance and all the things and and shores for this is all my salvation and all of my desire although he makes it not to grow but the son of bala shall be all of them as thrown thrust away because they cannot be taken with hand but the man the man that shall touch them must be forced with iron and the staff of a spear and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place word last words of david it's more like an analogy it's more like a how he feel about god what god put through to him as long as you do these things you be all right family as long and that's what he did he stayed true to his word he said the rock of israel he's saying god is his rock God is his rock in his life, and he's not going to be fearless because he know God is in his life, family. So that's how you got to treat your father. He comes first. He comes over every single thing you could possibly put before him. But this has been your brother Jehoshaphat. Let, let God's blessing, let his grace, let his mercy, let his favor be upon you. Don't kid yourself. Come get yourself some of this nine o'clock prayer hour to be in assemble with your brothers and sisters in spirit. Come magnify, come edify, come pour out your heart to your father who loves you so. This has been your brother, fat boy, fish, peace and blessings be upon you in Yeshua precious name for he is the Lord.